The Trotsky Situation in Puerto Rico, December 2017. The SL slash ICL in Puerto Rico Annexation Socialist. When the Communist International was founded after the 1970 Bolshevik Revolution, led by Vladimir Lenin and Leon Trotsky, one of the first acts was to require in its infamous 21 conditions for membership that any party joining the commenter would have to come out unconditionally, in word and deed, for independence of the colonies from the start. The Trotskyist movement in the United States called for the independence for Puerto Rico. This was the position for the Spartans League, where it was voice of revolutionary Trotskyism. By 1998, an SL Sunday corrected itself, declaring we do not currently advocate independence for Puerto Rico. Its argument was that the vast majority of the population there is not in favor at this time. The workers' vanguard, 11 September 1998. This was a huge betrayal for the communist principle. Now, the SL has gone a step further, declared that it will support statehood, that is the colonial annexation of Puerto Rico. The SL's 1998 correction was to an article of the general strike against the privatization of the Puerto Rican phone company, which internationalist group actively supported. The IG lefty distributed for the pickup lines in San Juan, including the headline Junkie Imperialism Out. For Puerto Rico's right for to independence, for a socialist federation of the Caribbean, see the internationalist number 6 in November to December 1998. The left lead declared that the IG and the League of the Fourth International advocate independence for Puerto Rico in order to strike a blow against U.S. imperialism and because only by breaking out the national subjugation of colonial rule can the international class struggle come to fore. A key event in the strike was the march in Fort Buchanan in San Juan demanding the U.S. get out of Puerto Rico. The IG exposed the Socialist Front's shameful revision of the revolutionary Marxism on colonies, knowing that these ex Trotskyists would never have been accepted in Lenin's and Trotsky's commentary. See the ICL renounced fight for Puerto Rico independence in the Internationalist No. 6, November to December 1998. In response to the WV in January 8, 1999, declared that we favored the independence of the self-determination. Some champions ever since the Socialist Front have been dancing around the question, something saying in favor of independence, something they will favor but never advocate it. In fact, every U.S. president from Jimmy Carter on, including from both Bushes, and claimed to support Puerto Rico's right for self-determination and independence. Then in the late August, a new issue of Spartacus appeared, the first in three years reprinting the edited document of the Conference of the Socialist League International Communist League, entitled The Struggle Against the Chauvinist Hydra. This one strange document asserts that many ICL leaders have been characterized by Anglo chauvinism, true enough, but also the SL slash ICL's former Leninist position of the national question going back to nineteen seventy five was chauvinistic. Combine this with, with a purge of whole layers of long-time cadres for the top leadership. In fact, the Hydra document embraced bourgeois nationalism and repeatedly tried to extend Lenin by claiming that he said the opposite of what he wrote. On Puerto Rico, we now read, Lo and behold, that the SL's ICL chairman consulted Jim Robertson argued back in 1998 that we strongly advocate independence for Puerto Rico, even though the WWE repeatedly wrote the opposite. Has the SL ICL finally seen the light? Hardly. The Hydra document did admit the SL's shitty shallowing on Puerto Rico independence, but then it flows in, in the singer that even though the sentiment for statehood is the result of economic blackmail by the United States, it's not defend the right of Puerto Ricans to choose statehood as a supposed expression of self-determination, and just as the past is cynical claim that calling for independence meant enforcing on the Puerto Rican people. The SL now pretends the opposite calls for statehood equals preventing Puerto Ricans from choosing. Moreover, the Socialist Front now declares that it will support statehood should Puerto Ricans decide they want statehood. We will support the will of the population, workers' vanguard, the 1st of December. But how would the collective will be determined in another rigged colonial referendum? In reality, becoming a state will be a colonial annexation. It will inevitably mean the destruction of the Puerto Rican nation, which is whatever case of statehood, namely the far-right wing of Puerto Rican bourgeois politicians, intended. 
In, in 2012, the pro-statehood PNP, the new progressive party, Governor Luis Fortuño, called for the instruction of public school and all subjects to switch to over to English by 2022. This is an island where 94% of the population speaks Spanish at home, and recently, as two years ago, the socialist front could still see that was a state currently stated that statehood or the annexation will accelerate the tendency of English to replace Spanish on this island, ultimately threatening the national identity of the Puerto Rican people. The Workers' Vanguard, 2nd October 2015. There is no less true today, but now they're for it. So, the ex trotskyist anti leninists of the Sportingist League, the ICL, are explicitly supporting colonial annexation. Naturally, they still refuse to call an ambiguously for the independence for colony, and not just on Puerto Rico. Also, for the U.S. Virgin Islands, the French colonies are Martinique and Guadalupe. This is the direct continuation of their voice of force support for the 2010 U.S. invasion of Haiti in the guise of the earthquake relief which they later had to admit was a social imperialist betrayal. Their new annexation line of Puerto Rico is another pro-imperialist betrayal and the attempt somehow married this for their claim that in the abstract they advocate favor or will favor independence, reek of a wrong that compromise. The SLICL is spinning like a top of the national question. In the 1998, the SLICL gave the, a left cover to colonialism, abandoning call for the independence for Puerto Rico. In 2010, they gave a left over to junky imperialist occupation of Haiti, buying the story of the, the Democratic Obama administration There was humanitarian aid. Now, in 2017, in support of statehood for Puerto Rico, they put a left blowout over the imperialist chauvinism. The SLICL's annexationist position is the quintessence of that. Recall how an earlier pro-statehood so uh, pro socialist Santiago Iglesia supported repression of independista in the 1930s. And don't, and don't forget how President Ulysses Grant sought to annex the Dominican Republic after the U.S. Civil War, or how the slave democracy sought to annex Cuba after the 1848 war that stole half of Mexico. Back in 1998, when the Socialist Front announced it did not advocate Puerto Rican independence, he argued that most Puerto Ricans are low to relinquish the benefits of U.S. citizenship. Let's see. Who those benefits include the fact that Puerto Ricans on the U.S. mainland have an 80% higher poverty rate than the overall population, a 60% higher unemployment rate, and 28% lower median family income? At this moment, the fact that Puerto Ricans or U.S. citizens mean they can escape the hellish conditions of the island by purchasing an airline ticket to Florida if they can get a seat, but the desperation measure is hardly a yardstick of support for annexation. The PMP government tr trumpets the 97% vote for statehood, and the phony referendum is staged in June, yet less than a quarter of the voters participate. In many cases, this is a bogus argument. If Puerto Rico becomes independent, it doesn't mean Puerto Rico automatically lose U.S. citizenship when it's the large number of U.S. slash Israel dual citizens. At present, it is extremely difficult to stretch someone born in the U.S. out their citizenship, although the races may certainly try. Verdly, immigrant bashers are demanding an overturn of the 14th Amendment, one on the battlefield of the Civil War, which declared that everyone born on the territory of the U.S. is a citizen, including former slaves and children of immigrants, document or undocument alike. This undergoes the fact that the struggle against the colonial subjugation of Puerto Rico is a battle against racist reaction across the board, and the fight can only be definitely won through socialist revolution. The latter-day Spartacus Lee grotesquely claimed in Hydra that for the IG imperialists, why the Americans can decide to fail Puerto Ricans without any concern for their national will, this race baby slander, which is particularly stupid, coming to them and directly against us in the total invention by a meeting imperialist chauvinist, it is contracted by everything the IG has written on Puerto Rico. The IG left it on the 1998 general strike 
stress the right for independence as an overwhelming majority of Puerto Rican population does not present favor independence and the working class has no interest in forcing independence against the will of the Puerto Rican population. Yet, as the IG insisted in calling for independence, our program is not governed by what is currently popular but what is necessary for proletarian revolution and the liberation of the oppressed. The ICL renounced Puerto Rican independence. Today's socialist front slash ICL is turning its back on the three decades when a revolutionary Trotskyist they stood for square for independence from Puerto Rico. Now they champion bourgeois nationalism from Quebec to Catalonia and call to a break of mushy national imperial state such as Belgium, even when the population does not favor that. Simultaneously, these annexationist socialists refuse to call for the asylum for refugees fleeing imperious instigated war and terror. As defenders of Lenin and Trotsky and the early Communist International, the League for the Fourth International calls for independence for all colonies, even and we fight for the workers' revolution for the Caribbean to the imperialist heartland.